my name is Rachel. You can call me Orchid. I work at San Joaquin Outdoor School and today I will be reading Your Own Best Secret Place by Bird Baylor and Peter Parnall. His name is William Cottonwood. That's all I know about him. Just that and the way he loved a secret place he had to leave. I think of William Cottonwood a lot. I wish I knew where he is now. I'd tell him how I found his secret place and how I'm taking care of it and that I hope he doesn't mind my being there. Or you could tell him for me. If you ever meet somebody and his name is William Cottonwood and he used to live by the Rio Grande River in a valley in New Mexico where there are chili farms and cornfields, then ask him if he left three messages nailed up on a hollow tree. If he says yes, then he's the William Cottonwood I'm looking for. Tell him this for me. Just say I found his place by accident. It was early morning on a rainy day. I was on the far side of the river, away from the farms, away from the muddy dirt road. He must have walked there too. Through the same tangle of shadowy thickets and tall river grass and salt cedars and willows and cottonwood trees. He must have liked the damp leaf smell and the sudden swoop of pinion jays and the long straight shafts of sunlight through the treetops there. Maybe he was like me, sitting there on a fallen white tree trunk, wanting beavers or badgers or a fox to pass by. He may have found his secret place the same way I did, by climbing up on that dead fallen tree and liking the way it makes a bridge and balancing and then walking the length of its long heavy trunk. That's where I was when I noticed a hollow in the foot of a cottonwood tree. Then I was down on my hands and knees looking in, expecting to see maybe fox tracks. I thought I shouldn't go inside since someone else's things were there. I started to leave. That's when I saw three notes nailed up on the tree. You could tell they were written on brown paper sacks he had cut into squares. If anybody finds my place, read this. I have to go away, but I will be back no matter what. If you are cold, you can use the blanket, but do not use my other stuff. Keep it in the tree, keep it dry. Signed, William Cruz. No matter how long I am gone, this is still my tree. To make sure I remember it, I change my name from William Cruz to William Cottonwood. Everyone should call me William Cottonwood, beginning now. Signed, William Cottonwood. Goodbye. Signed, William Cottonwood. One of the papers was coming loose. I got a rock and nailed it down. Then I crawled into the hole and I pulled the blue blanket around me. I could see a few raindrops hitting the ground, but I stayed where I was curled up like a fox, cozy and warm, looking out at the rain. I began to understand how William Cottonwood felt there. Then it seemed like we were friends, and maybe he'd want me to look at the things he had left in that red coffee can, so I did. They were all good things. The stub of a pencil, a knife with two blades, a candle burned down almost to the end, a feather I liked, and a picture he'd drawn on a sack. It was a picture of what you see looking out. I held it up and it was right. He had put in a rabbit too. I knew how quiet that rabbit must have sat while William Cottonwood was drawing. I never looked in the can again. At first I used to wonder why he left those things. I knew he didn't forget them. What I think is that leaving things you like means you'll be back. I think of William Cottonwood a lot and sometimes sitting in his tree I think of other private hidden secret places I have had. The best one was a place I used to go when I was little. It was just a sandy gully cutting through the hard flat Texas earth, but that gully was a whole world by itself and I was the only person there. It was much, it was more like a ditch than a canyon, but I'd never seen a canyon then and it was what I thought a canyon ought to be. It was deep and wide and the walls were taller than I was and when I looked up I could only see sky. I always had to run there. I had to lift my arms up high. I had to be barefoot even if sand was burning my feet. 
Since then, I've seen a hundred deeper canyons, but I still miss that gully that wasn't even a canyon at all. I know William Cotton would like, would like it there. If I could, I'd let him borrow it a while until he goes home to his tree. But nobody knows where he is. I've told a few people about him. One was a boy who has a place where 50 bales of hay are stacked up in a barn. He says those 50 bales of hay make mountains and tunnels and craters and caves. He says mice play all around him and they aren't afraid. He says hay smells better than flowers and is the best thing in the world to sleep on. And he says he'll share that place with William Cottonwood if William Cottonwood is in Montana. I told two girls. The place they like is a white sand dune. It's out in the open, not hidden away like secret places usually are. But nobody goes there but them. It's private in a different way. They say any little wind makes ripples there and the sand looks like waves and changes every day and always seems magic. They say they'll share this with William Cottonwood. Their sand dune is five miles down the road from Yuma, Arizona. Somebody else I know has a pear tree in Virginia that bends down to the ground. He sleeps there lots of times on summer nights and eats a pear for breakfast. He told me he would ask around for William Cottonwood. You can too. If you find him and you take him to your own best secret place, then while you're sitting there together, just tell him this for me. Say I keep a list of all the birds and animals I see from where I sit inside his tree looking out. Say I've brought another coffee can. I keep the list in it. It's there for him to read when he comes home. Tell him I use his blanket when I'm cold, but I never touch his other stuff. Tell him I think of him a lot. Tell William Cottonwood I'm here. The end. Thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me in my reading of Your Own Best Secret Place. I have some follow-up questions. The first one is, what do you wonder about William Cottonwood? Have any thoughts about wondering about Mr. Cottonwood? Who are they? And then my next follow-up question is, what would your own best secret place look like? What would you put in it? Would you visit it often? Tell me about your secret place. Remember to stay safe and please ask your parents or guardians before going outside. Thank you.